Hey friends, welcome to a weekly word with Pastor Nate. This is my chance to check in with you, to let you know what's happening in the life of Holy Cross Lutheran Church, and to invite you to reflect with me on this next week's scripture lesson that we'll hear proclaimed in worship on Sunday, the 21st of April, 2024. I want to remind you of a couple important things that are coming up in the life of our church. And first is that on May the 5th, that's a Sunday, we will be having a all-ages lunch after worship, so at about 11 o'clock. And uh, we want to encourage everyone to come and uh, participate, not just in a meal, but in fellowship and uh, faith conversations between our kids and our adults. We're trying to nurture those cross-generational relationships and help us grow together in our faith and in our relationships with one another. The other thing that I want to put on your radar is uh, the day of Pentecost. This is one of the principal feasts of the church. It's when we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit and the creation of the church. And that will happen on Sunday, May the 19th. That will also be the day that we confirm uh, two young people from our congregation, Garrison Mosier and Evie Formo. And once again, after worship on that Sunday, we'll have a luncheon to celebrate Evie and Garrison and what God has done, is doing, and promises yet to do in their lives. So I hope you'll make every effort to be there on those two really important Sundays in the life of our church. This next week, this next Sunday, we continue hearing from the book of First John. This is a, a letter that was written to the church that many people believe was written by the same apostle who wrote the Gospel of John, and it certainly echoes many of the same concerns uh, that we hear from the Gospel of John. And this is a wonderful book in that it doesn't just tell us uh, the story of Jesus' resurrection, but it tells us what the implications of the resurrection are for our life together as Christians today. And one of the great concerns of the Gospel of John and of the letter of 1 John is uh, love. And we hear in this week's lesson uh, that love of God uh, happens in and through our love of neighbor. John asks the rhetorical question, how can you say that the love of God abides in you if you're not loving in action and in truth your brothers and sisters who are in need? And here John is, is talking primarily about the, the brothers and sisters in the church, but certainly I think that concern uh, spills over to the needs of of our friends and our neighbors and our loved ones in the world. Now, to take a step back, we all know that there are different kinds of love. When I talk about uh, my love for beer and my love for the music of Miles Davis, uh, my love for my dear close friends and my love for my wife, everybody knows I'm talking about different kinds of love. Uh, we intuitively know, and theology, I think, makes explicit that uh, there's a qualitative difference between loving God and loving the things of this world. And yet, today's lesson, our, our lesson for Sunday from 1 John, tells us that uh, that distinction is in some ways blurred. Uh, we want to make a firm distinction, but it's blurred when it comes to uh, loving our brothers and sisters in the faith. John tells us that our expression of love for one another in truth and in action is the means by which we express our love for God. And what's more is that our lesson tells us that we are to be bold and uh, expectant in asking for whatever we want for the purpose of loving our neighbor in our prayers. 
Now here in our congregation, I am delighted to see so many signs of love uh, for our brothers and sisters who are in need, both inside our congregation and beyond. Uh, even as I record this video, there are people who are gathering in our church parking lot to uh, be a part of the mobile food pantry and serve people who are hungry. But I wonder, I wonder what it would look like for us to nurture that love for our neighbors. I wonder what it would look like to grow in it. I wonder what it would look like to nurture a life of prayer in which we can learn to trust God enough to boldly ask for the things that we need uh, to love and care for one another. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday, and I pray all God's best for your life. Let's pray together. O oh Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'll see you Sunday. <laughs>